Head of International Relations at WITS, Professor John Stremlau. Thank you for being with us, Good uh, evening. Professor. Firstly, the, the US Secretary of State has been meeting with Cal King uh, Salman. Let's just look at what he's been promised, a, a thorough, transparent investigation. How good is that promise from the Saudi king? What this seems to be about is the crown prince. Kasoji had a problem with the crown prince. A lot of people have problems with the crown prince, as your correspondent was quoting Lindsey Graham, the senator. And I think replacing the crown prince will be critical, but how that happens, if it happens, it's awfully hard to say right now. The, the, the impression that Donald Trump gives is that there's a great dependency on jobs for this arms deal, which was actually negotiated, I believe, by the Obama administration. There's been no new arms deals. It's $110 billion. It's a big deal, but it's not the be-all or end-all. And besides, the U.S. has huge leverage over the Saudis because they supply all the military parts for their aircraft and their planes. You know, this is an armed petrol station is what Saudi Arabia is. It poses real collateral damage risks to South Africa and to other third countries, of course, and that's worth considering because we believe strongly in this country about the freedom of press, but at the same time, we've got real stakes at, 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 in the Saudi relationship. Yeah, big question. Will countries speak out against human rights abuses, uh, including South Africa? But, but first, would it surprise you if Saudi Arabia was guilty of state-sponsored murder? That's what we're talking about No, here. of course it wouldn't surprise me. It's a very ruthless regime. It's regarded by these various NGOs as the fourth most autocratic regime in the world. As you know, there's been some talk about reform and giving women a little bit of uh, a stature and rights, but it's a very closed system and they're ruthless. And so what this may have been is a, uh, uh, a rendition of pulling poor Kosoji out of Turkey and in back to Saudi Arabia for whatever is going to be done with him, and it went wrong. Who knows? But for Trump to say that this is a rogue element that may have, you know, been been perpetrating this crime is crazy because this was in the Saudi consulate. So, mm -hmm. you know, he's obf he's obfuscating right now. But this, the U.S. has real stakes, and I think if they could find a way to stabilize the situation, it would give South Africa a little breather because South Africa's got some real dilemmas there too. Is is the U.S. already is U.S. President Donald Trump already giving Saudi Arabia an excuse, rogue well, elements? Well, of course he always does. This is his habit. You know, he says. Um, oh, there's a real problem here, but then I, it's been denied by the principal, whether it's Putin or whether it's Erdogan or whether it's, in fact, now Saudi Arabia. Uh, and then he conjures up a theory based on after a pledge of doing an investigation. And, and people are just confused as to where the truth lies. What will happen, I believe, because I believe the intelligence communities already know very well what happened to Kosoji, because mm. the Turks have been quite open about it. But we have to wait, and I think it's useful for all of us, including the South African government, to say, let's wait and see what transpires as a result of this. But my guess is that they will say that it was an interrogation that went wrong. And then the question becomes, is Saudi Arabia prepared to take this young 33-year-old crown prince who has caused such headaches for so many people already by his arbitrariness, his locking up of political oppo opponents in, in uh, Riyadh when he first came to power, and his unpredictability, will they put him to the side and not allow the oil markets to go out mm. crazy? And then South Africa and others have to decide what their relationships with Saudi Arabia are going to be. Well, I'm glad you've mentioned oil because uh, Saudi Arabia, the de facto leader of OPEC, this massive oil cartel that controls all oil, uh, our, well, certainly influences most oil prices. However, Donald Trump has spoken out about OPEC recently. Well, OPEC is not what it was back in the 70s when we had the embargo and the price spike. Um, the, the, the Saudi Arabian uh, uh, producers are huge, and indeed South Africa gets 45% of its oil from Saudi Arabia, but the Americans only get 9%. They don't really need the American, mm. they don't need the Saudi uh, import. They export six times that amount. America's become self-sufficient in, 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 in energy and is, is a major exporter as well. So that it, it, it doesn't... Be seem credible to me that the oil markets need to be at the mercy of Saudi Arabia, uh, but it is a danger if the Saudis want to play tough on that. Mm. So finding a compromise solution in the short term doesn't 
remove the, the threat to, to, to the free press and the journalists in, in Saudi Arabia, but may give a breathing space for things like the investment that has been promised by Saudi Arabia to South Africa, uh, the $10 billion that, that President Ramaphosa uh, thought he had signed up for and from the United Arab uh, Emirates. Uh, those are important uh, uh, promises that may impact on our development here, but we can't compromise our basic principles, so you're trying to balance yeah. things all the time. Well, do you I believe uh, a journalist for the Daily Maverick is suggesting today that South Africa is being quiet about this because of that potential 10 billion rand investment in Dinah. Well, I think South Africa is being prudent and I think the Ramaphosa administration is being careful here because there are important issues at stake, which is the price of oil, which is the investment, which is the talk that's going on with regard to the defense industry. And don't forget there's also this bloody war going on in Yemen, which South Africa is not happy about, no one's happy about, the international community and the UN has condemned it, it, it's, it's, it's teetering on major famine and those are Saudi weapons and those are Saudi attack drones that may have been bought from South Africa so South Africa is in a very awkward position as a small country trying to get on in the world and still be faithful to its true principles that are at the heart of its constitution mm. it's a tough thing but, but given apartheid given the people who spoke out when that was happening shouldn't we always speak out against human rights abuses of course of course but in a real world you also have to govern and you have to maintain the attack on poverty and overcoming the corruption that has bedeviled the country and all the other issues that are confronting a government this is not to excuse but it is to say that your job is tougher because you want citizens to understand that the government is trying and I believe the Ramaphosa government uh, and Lindiwi Sasulu Durka's uh, minister are trying to find a way forward that will or to square several circles. Yeah. Maybe we lose out on investment if this escalates. I mean, if it does become, uh, the, the tensions become heightened between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. What are the ramifications for us well, and other small countries? Let's, let's first say, let's hope that those will not escalate because Pompeo is a much more skilled negotiator than Donald Trump and he may well go to Turkey and you've got the in the backdrop the question of where where Iran is going to be in all this and what is Iran going to do with its oil supplies Venezuela which is the biggest source is also in 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 crisis as you know politically so it's a tricky moment to navigate the oil markets which have already spiked to eighty six dollars a barrel and could go higher and so therefore I think it's important for um, Pompeo to talk to the Turks, for the Turks and the Saudis to talk, but maybe there's going to have to be some sort of a action taken by Saudi Arabia to reassure the international community, which the U.S. should be pushing mm -hmm. for, which is the removal of the crown prince, if that's possible. Uh, and explain his power. So people phone the king, speak to the king, but he is the power behind the throne. Well, the, the, the king is, is, is delegating authority in a transition this is a family business mm. this this oil rich state of 33 million people is really run by a family and has the discovery of oil in 1934 and so consequently what happens within that family this is an anomaly in today's world you know most of the world at least proclaims to be democracies the Saudi Arabia and the Vatican are probably the two leading uh, entities that don't claim to be democracies ironically enough Saudi Arabia is a is a, is a very um, tough and I say um, uh, re religiously extreme don't forget the the uh, terrorists that hit 9-11 or, mm -hmm. or 15 of the 19 were Saudis it's a very tough place and it's not a good ally but American regimes have felt that for their Middle East policy but Trump is has, has up the ante on this that he's bet a lot on Saudi Arabia being a partner of his and so he's going to try to find a way through this and I think we ought to hold Trump accountable to find a solution. And, and can the US though tell the family uh, what to do? There was Guantanamo Bay uh, interrogations gone wrong, the waterboarding scandal, where are they in terms of uh, cleaning up uh, interrogations? The um, Trump administration says this is not a problem. Uh, it takes a very different view than the Obama administration. But to come back to the core point about their relationship with the Saudis, it seems to me that they have put themselves in a position where they've got a lot riding on that relationship. And therefore, they have to find a formula that will get us out of this box. And I'm not sure tonight what Pompano was able to get from the king in ways of assurances 
and how we go forward. This is a story which is going to be unfolding in the coming days that we all have to watch carefully because the ramifications for all of us, mm. including down here, could be quite severe. Oh, huge. So the world awaits. Thank you very much. Uh, and everybody asking, where is Khashoggi? Was he killed? Was it state-sponsored murder by the Saudi Arabians? And what do countries like the United States and South Africa uh, here at the bottom of the continent, what do we do? Because those ramifications are big for us. That was Head of International Relations at WITS, Professor John Stremlau.